Okay, in this very brief example, I'm just going to show you how to add error bars into a plot using some example data, and then ultimately how to make a professional looking picture or graph that you want. You may want to copy that into a report. Now I've got a bit of example data here, went out, did a very simple survey using a quad rat. I measured 20 of these along an area and I counted a number of species that fell within the quad rat. And from that data I've created some summary statistics. The first one is the average number of species that we found within the quad rat. Second, standard deviation. We have a count, which is the number of quad rats that we did. And I've calculated the standard error. Now standard error is very simple to calculate. It takes into account the number of samples that you did. And it basically divides the standard deviation by the square root of the count. And you just put equal in Excel to generate formula making mode. We go select the cell with the standard deviation in. Divide, which is by slash. And the square root, which is SQRT, bracket, and we select the number of samples that we did, close bracket, and there we go. Okay, and I've done that for everyone very quickly. One way to do it is to drag this cell down by going over the little corner icon there that copies your formula and updates the cell registration so that makes sure that it's on each row. And we've got our data now. What we're going to use is that we're going to use these words here as our x-axis. We're going to use the species richness, the mean, to formulate our x-axis. And for this graph, we're going to draw a bar chart. And the error bars are going to be the standard error number that I've calculated. Okay? So these three components will be used to make our particular graph. So to add a chart, I'm going to add it by clicking the chart tab at the top. Select column. Just off the screen, I select the clustered column. Okay? And clustered column will essentially give us single bars for our simple data set. On the chart tab again, you see it says data and select. Okay? And we can select the data source that we're interested in. Add a new series. My values are the the average of the species richness from a quadrat, the x axis labels, and the site names. That's all we need to do for this. And you see that Excel has drawn a fairly rudimentary graph for us there. A couple of things that we need to do. First, let's get rid of this series one. We don't need that because we want to get a single bar. We don't need these horizontal lines which just take up too much space. We need to add a label on this side now. Which basically illustrates what we want to call this. Species richness is a good, way, good place to start. You can make it a bit bigger so you can see it. You can see that the front side is actually quite small. So I'm just going to change the front side back to home and then I'm just going to make these labels. 16, and make these ones 16 is where actually the same, and I make the label here 20. It's a bit bigger. Turn the builder and just move this slightly up to say. Okay, so now it's much, much more legible. I'm also going to change the color and outline of the bars. So for the line, which is the outline of the bar, I'm going to select black. Fill, I'm going to select white. And you see that we've now got a very clear graph that shows exactly what we want to see. The, third, the final thing I'm going to do for this is just to turn off the border that goes around the outside of the entire figure. So now you copy this into it, into your report or Word document. It's perfectly clear. There's no border around distracting from the data that's in the graph. Those of you who are eagle-eyed will notice I've yet to add on the other bar, and that's the next step. Click chart layout, and you see all the different options that are assigned to this particular graph. You see it on the side, it's error bars. Drop it down, and it automatically generates some error bars. But we're going to use our standard error that we've calculated. So we click error bar options at the bottom. 
bring it back from it. We can change the color, we can change the lines, we can do all these things with the format and the video bad. You actually don't need to do anything except define the data that's going to be used to form the error bar. And you click here at the side, it gives you all these options, different styles, birth, plus, minus, etc. We want birth, we want it capped, and we want to select custom down the bottom down here and specify our value. Brings up this, positive and error, select positive, standard error, select a negative error bar, same one. Okay. Repeat that. We've now added error bars onto our clock. That is a very, very good strong clock that would reproduce incredibly well in the report. Very clear, very professional. Error bars, labels are present, very clear what's going on. That is pretty much it.